So it has definitely been a good minute since my last video. Now that it's July, <laughs> we're actually talking about like fall migration for uh, for shorebirds. Today I'll be uh, kind of recapping how uh, the spring went. So due to COVID-19, a lot of the best spots in northwestern Ohio along uh, the Lake Erie shore um, were closed. Kind of was forced to really explore my local patches. It was actually one of arguably my most productive spring yet. In terms of variety, I didn't do too, too great this year. I missed a good handful of warblers like Canada, uh, Wilson's, what else did I miss? Um, I'm always looking for a worm-eating or a Connecticut warbler in my county. Um, those are just two really, really difficult birds to find, at least in my location of Ohio. In terms of media, like I was able to snag so many different photos of so many different migrants. Honestly, pretty surreal to get such a good variety in my little middle of nowhere location. So typically I usually go to McGee Marsh to get like the good variety of migrants just because it's such a such a trap for them. They usually what, what makes McGee Marsh so special is that well not only is the habitat really good, it's just the location is like legitimately perfect. It is it is absolutely the most perfect to find migrating birds. Um, it's positioned right right at the very tip or right at the very lower part of uh, Lake Erie. So birds will like see the huge body of water and uh, stop to uh, refuel so then they don't they can make the non-stop flight over Lake Erie. Uh, much more easier. There's gonna be birds in my neck of the woods. They're just gonna be a little bit more difficult to find. I was able to get my, I was able to finally get my nemesis bird photograph, the blue-headed vireo. That was one of the most surreal things because, like, I've been after that bird for at least four or five years now. Even fall, fall and spring, no matter what, they've always been <laughs> avoiding my lens. And uh, even whenever I travel down to Florida, because they they winter down there, I've never been able to get a, um, an opportunity with them. So. I was uh, on this ridge at one of my favorite, at my actual only local state park in my county. It overlooks a river, so that also helps with getting a nice eye level view. And uh, it was <laughs> just bouncing around, finally came, I was just kind of waiting patiently. I actually didn't even know what it was at first, and then when it came a little closer, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a, that's, that's, that's the Moby Dick of birds, for me at least. Got a handful of good books. Uh, it was like super clean, it was on those nice uh, budding leaves. I'm pretty sure it's a maple, but um, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I uh, have lots to learn when it comes to uh, botany, and that was one of my favorite moments, along with getting a handful of other species in that same general area. I spent a lot of time at that state park. It made things really easy when we're on, you're on that ridge, you don't have to you don't get warbler neck where you're looking up constantly at the birds in the treetops. So that's what makes areas around me really special because you can get those good look at the uh, at the migrating songbirds. You don't necessarily need to travel to get really, really good photos of birds. Tons of wildlife around you, no matter where you live. Even if you're in, in a really urban city like Toronto or Cleveland or whatever, or Columbus even, a lot of people don't realize what actually is around you. The main bird that you're probably hearing is the house wren. They're one of our more common migrants and uh, definitely one of the more chattier birds like most wrens. No matter how, even though they're super, super tiny, they have definitely got a set of lungs on them. You go to any marsh and marsh wrens are just making an entire chorus there. They can be so loud and then traveling through the any kind of woods and Carolina wren will belt out there song and it's just crazy how small they are yet how loud they can really really get. Uh, when it comes to spring migration though very um, condensed uh, where you'll get a ton of birds coming like all at once so you'll have the opportunity to see upwards of like 120 150 species <laughs> um, on a good year. If you're not extremely well versed with your eastern migrants it can be very very overwhelming and that's how exactly how I felt on my first honestly my first couple of migrations is because like you have so many of these songbirds singing like all at once it, like in in a in a single morning and it's like you don't even know where to point your camera or point your binoculars or point your scope given if you're doing shorebirds or gulls or whatever and once you get a little more comfortable with it things start to get you get, start to get a grasp on okay this sound this this bird sounds like a warbler let's go look after that as opposed to 
I hear a goldfinch going the other way. I mean, while no, not trying to slight a goldfinch at all, they're super beautiful. Middle of May, you're gonna wanna look for the rare migrant, at least in my opinion, as opposed to the bird that's gonna be sticking around your area year round. It can be daunting, so if you do feel that way, it's definitely normal. Uh, I am terrible at remembering to bring any bug spray and I almost never wear any. Uh, it is just, it's been a terrible year for getting uh, insect bites of all sorts. Uh, it's been a really strong year for ticks. So thankfully none have been embedded, but I've probably had at least 40 to 50 ticks on me so far this year, and it's only in July. Along with COVID, and you gotta worry about Lyme disease, and while having coronavirus and Lyme disease is kind of a joke in itself, uh, it's definitely a serious matter. So no luck on the hummingbird or or a house wren. Uh, we're gonna hop over to another park. Uh, where do I want to go? So going over the numbers, 17 warblers. Favorite one, probably the golden wing. Warbler, that's the first time I've ever been able to get a photo of it. Finding one in my county and getting a, a half decent photo of it, that was just incredible. I was able to get a whole bunch of other ones, plenty that I've never been able to photograph before. I was able to finally get some upgrades to my Prairie Warbler collection. And then of course, um, Hooded Warbler, that's like one of my favorites. I go to a, my uh, local state park for that. Closing off uh, with some of the migrants, um, I mentioned Blue-Headed Vireo, but another highlight was getting uh, Philadelphia Vireo for the first time. And then I was able to get both water thrushes, which is definitely a task in itself, at least in my area. So I was able to get Louisiana water thrush like really, really soon into migration, like mid-April when they, is when they, at least um, is when I photographed that bird. And then Northern water thrush was um, absolutely incredible. I was able to get that um, at least three consecutive evenings at this exact spot that I'm in. Um, I know northern water thrush prefer like stagnant water as opposed to Louisiana water thrush preferring more of a babbling brook, more of a flowing creek, sometimes rivers too. Going on with more warblers, I uh, got my first ever black and white warbler shot. Probably the main highlight I think of spring migration was probably my only good views of least bittern. And the craziest part about it was it was um, not in a marsh, it was in a creek. It was really, really wide out, out in the open. It wasn't like obstructed by a billion cattails like they usually are. Tons of uh, Baltimore Orioles. Basically everywhere I went to, there was um, Orioles hanging out. I live in the Miami Valley and uh, we it's based around the Great Miami River, but in my county, I live more close, closer to the Little Miami River, which is basically um, a more scenic river at least in my opinion plenty of gorges so with gorges it basically um, the river just kind of carved through a bunch of limestone and some of the parks around the gorge section of the little miami you can get some close views of the trees that kind of overlook it so it's basically like if you this is sort of like that where um you have the river in the middle and then you have like the limestone cliffs on either side and the trail is kind of run right next to the tops of the cliff and then you have like the trees that are on the cliffs as well so and the birds love the tip tops of the trees as as migrants usually do and getting um, having the ability to be up top right here and shooting them at eye level is just it's just such a unique setup um, to where you can get some really intimate shots and you're not having to look up you can get some good backgrounds and all that you ever take a shower and don't dry but then try to put clothes on, because that's exactly how it feels right now. It's just, and here's the most Midwestern term you've ever heard. It is quite muggy right now. Muggy is probably the best way to describe today. So this place is super, super special. Um, this is my favorite prairie that I go to. This is actually technically the first airport in the entire world. Um, this is where the Wright brothers um, crafted their uh, Wright Flyers and began um, flying and uh, 
Right now I'm in a replica, but this is where this is a replica hangar where they would actually store their um, flying machines, their airplanes. So um, what's really cool about this place is that you got the, the actual field that they would fly around, and then to the right you have probably Ohio's best prairie. I'm not trying to be biased or whatever because it's my local prairie, but you get people all over the state coming to this spot. And uh, just the history, I mean, this is where uh, aviation began, um, arguably. I mean, I know the Wright brothers went to North Carolina, but that's definitely an argument for another time. Uh, what's cool about the little hangar is that we got barn swallows nesting in here. Try to zoom in up here. Maybe you can see the barn swallows flying around me, but this is just a fascinating place. So I just want to say thanks for uh, sticking around and tagging along uh, to the very end. Definitely means the world to me. Hopefully your spring was uh, was eventful in a very positive form. I know it's definitely been uh, one of the most uh, tumultuous uh, years in, uh, in recent time. So uh, I just want to say thank you and I apologize for uh, slacking, on, uh, slacking on the videos, on the video production. So um, hopefully uh, things will turn around and um, I can uh, pump some more of these out. So uh, thanks so much and uh, hopefully your summer has been good and uh, we'll see you um, hopefully uh, during uh, fall migration, if not sooner.